everyone! Uh, we are just waiting right now for some people to join us and then we will get started. I will now name this so everyone can know what this is about. right so welcome back to galapagos travel center's instagram live series on the basics of galapagos um a, uh, my name is kelsey and i will be your host for this live event on the regions of galapagos if you missed our last video um on flora fauna and formation you can find the video on our igtv right here on our instagram page or on our youtube channel you can also find it on our facebook page you can email us at info at galapagos .com, and we will send the video directly to you all right so we're just waiting for our special guest today so when they are here we will add him and we will really get started but let me tell you guys a little bit more about our series. Um, so if you don't already know what's it about. So the main goal of this series is for you guys to learn more about the Galapagos Islands. And two weeks ago, we covered the intro to the basics, like the weather, the climate in the islands, kind of where they are, um, when the best time for you to visit is, um, some animals that are unique to the islands, um, types of tours you can choose from like cruises or island hopping tours or land-based tours or diving tours or a combination of all of them and the best time for you to visit so if you haven't seen that you can check out our Instagram page and you can find it there um, and last week we talked about flora fauna and formation so a little bit more about plants and animals in Galapagos and also how the islands were formed like millions and millions and millions of years ago. Um, obviously today we'll be talking about, hi Enrique, I'm just doing an introduction to the series. So today we'll be talking about the regions of Galapagos and finally next week we will be talking about history, legends, and tales of the islands. So we're really happy that you all are here to join us for this series. And today, when we talk about regions of Galapagos, if you guys have any questions during the event at any time, um, you can comment them below and we will answer them all at the end. All right, so here with me, we have a very special guest who is joining us directly from the Galapagos Islands. So maybe a little bit patient with the connection. Uh, so it's not because it's not as strong in other places, but let's give a warm welcome to Enrique, who is a certified Galapagos Park naturalist guide. Um, we are really, really happy that you're here with us today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what it means to be a certified guide in the Galapagos? First of all, uh, um, it's the first time in four months that I wear my uniforms. <laughs> actually good um just still like fits. i'm sorry still fits <laughs> uh, well let's not let's not talk about that but uh <laughs> so um yeah i'm uh, a naturalist in the islands uh we are um one of the uh, 900 that we have in here and um um and well uh if we talk about it it's I like my job. Uh, sometimes we're kind of narcissists uh, about it uh, because it is the only job in the islands that enables us, enables a person to work in the uh, visitor sites and enjoy the visitor sites, same as tourists. Not in the same way because obviously I can't uh, get the first impression that you have of a sea lion, but I still like them. So yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> So what exactly is the job of a naturalist guide in Galapagos? Like, what do you do day to day in there? Uh, well, it depends a lot on the uh, kind of um, the tour that you are working with. If uh, we're doing mm -hmm. land-based tour, pretty much a schedule that you have to and um, uh, you basically go in 
to all these different sites and then you tell the stories of natural stories of, of, of the wildlife that you see there and also the landscapes. But if you are on a ship and you are on the ship for a number of days, then our role is basically um, um, schedule and which places we're going to visit, at what time we're going to visit these places, uh, how we're going to swim. Uh, Places because sometimes people come and say, Oh, I want to see sharks. But at the same time, some people say, No, we do not want to see sharks. Our job is to make sure everybody's comfortable with all the activities. And at the end of the day, the idea is just to make sure everybody's happy and well, making sure that they come back. Hopefully. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So thank you again so much for being with her being with us here today. Um, let's get started on the regions of Galapagos. So first, how do most tours in Galapagos work? Can you just kind of pick and choose what islands you want to go to, or are there set tours with itineraries and schedules? Uh, sorry, you gotta, you gotta be. <laughs> All right. So, uh, how do most tours work in the Galapagos? Are there itineraries, or do you just pick what islands you want to visit? Um. Well, there's. I remember when I started 10 years ago, there were mostly ships, and the ships have already a schedule that, that you follow, and you pick up uh, which okay. ship you want most or, or, or suits you the best. But I've, I've noticed that in the 11 years I've done this, 11 years later, there's an incredible variety. And, oh, it's unbelievable. So it's basically, um, the difference is if you want to do if you want to spend uh, the evening in a hotel or if you want that hotel to be a ship and move around the island. So that's kind of like the, the main differences. Mm -hmm. One option you are on a, you are um, based on, on an inhabited island and you are going around the near uh, places of these of, um, islands like San Cristobal or Santa Cruz or Isabela, you get to see a lot of wildlife. Uh, don't get me mm -hmm. wrong advantage of ships is that you get to these more remote places. Yeah. I prefer that the most. But yeah, definitely. every person. Yeah, great. So um, I have this map with me of the islands. So everyone can kind of get a better idea of where everything is in the Galapagos. So I'll show you that the more we get started with everything. So um, with tours usually being split up I think like most cruise tours or boat tours being split up between the Northwest and the Southeast. Let's start with the North and West regions of the islands. So what are some of these islands that um, you'll visit in this area? And what are some fight, fun sites that you'll see if you choose this area for your tour? So let me show you the North and West regions. I will turn my camera around. So oh, there we have the North. <laughs> in the west over here okay so um in the north of the map uh, what you are three islands and from the three yes. islands only here the visitor here. which is thank you you're welcome uh, only the uh visited and the other well the other two there's only two three ships that i know that visit this place you have the west, which is Isabella and Fernandina. If you go this one and this one, right? So Isabella is the one that looks like it. Yeah. It has. Yeah. If you are talking about the north, uh, then we have to talk about Genovesa, which is the. Oh, it's 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 a wow island for birders, and uh, I mean you have a colony of thousands of boobies. Sorry if some of you are not with the term boobies. It's a bird. And yeah. there's thousands of birds, so tens of thousands. So in the day, you easily see about uh, 10,000 plus birds in there. Snorkeling yeah. is great. Sometimes sea lions. Um, so that's basically the north. And uh, the, uh, the water in the north tends to be warmer than any other place. OK. Then in the west, Isabella and Fernandina, those are areas, I mean, it's a region 
that uh, faces the west, that mm -hmm. receives something upwelling, and the water is cooler. And okay. by cooler, I mean it will be different for about uh, three degrees, sometimes four degrees cooler. And okay. that, uh, that is enabling the environment to have this high productivity. So in the west is where you have your best chances to find penguins. That's what you definitely want to see. It is the only yeah. place where you can get to see a special bird called flightless cormorants. And you also have this number of iguanas. They're massive. They're like alligators. A little smaller than that. And you have this area. Every day you wake up and you are surrounded by volcanoes that they can boom. All right, so I know you already mentioned um, some boobies and penguins in this region, but what are some other flora and fauna that you will see when, if you visit these islands? So if you go in the west, these are islands that are much younger. So then the, um, the land has had less time to, to be colonized by vegetation. So you're talking about most cacti in pretty much all the places. So it's cacti, uh, there's a lot of different of that there's massive uh, um, uh, serious cactus and also some little ones that are called lava. and there's a lot of, uh, of of green along the shore which are mangroves and 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 the mangroves are, are one of my special places you get a lot of these animals that are looking for shelter which is really cool like turtles and and baby sharks and sometimes you see penguins but it's mostly like like a nursery for all these when they're in their early stage. So the West is, oh, the West has so much. I mean, every region has so much. Definitely. So what are some of like maybe the main activities that you will do in these areas? Uh, definitely walks. Definitely walks. In, in every place in the uh, West, North as well, uh, you have a lot of walks. Uh, also, this is an area, because I was telling you that there's a lot of mangroves in the West, it's a place where uh, you have a lot of options for rides along the uh, coast with, uh, with zoyaks, with little dinghies. And so you can get to see very close uh, the animals without. So, snorkeling is good, but as I said before, it's cooler. So, mm, some people might just last 10 minutes. Some people use two or three wetsuits, which I've noticed before, and, and then they can stay like maybe half an hour but you get to see a lot too. But we definitely um, uh, um, uh, promote the most the, uh, the walks. Definitely. So uh, let's move on to the south. Really cool. What? This time in the year, whales are arriving, the water is getting much colder. So that's definitely um, a must activity, whale watching. That sounds super fun also. Um, so let's talk about the south and the east. Um, what are some of the islands and maybe some fun tourist spots you will visit if you choose this um, area to visit? I will show you guys the map again. So what islands are there? Oh, so in the southeast you have, um, I don't know if my finger is pointing at the right direction or it should be that way, I don't know. So on this, I have uh, San Cristobal, which is my home island. Pretty cool. 8,000 people, 8,000 cool people. Uh, on the south, you have Española, which is our oldest island. And then you have Floriana, which is in the uh, middle south. So this, these three islands are what basically is the, um, the southeast region, uh, which uh, tends to be uh, windier than in other places. They're older. So if, if think that they are older, that means that all the animals that you probably find throughout the Galapagos have spent the most time in these islands. And that has eventually, I mean, we talk about evolution and natural selection and all that, um, these are islands that have the most um, uh, specifically found in all these areas uh, species. Uh, uh, like lizards, reptiles are, are found uh, specifically in, in each of these islands, some land birds and, and others. Um, one of the most uh, probably 
um, highlighted animal in that area is the waved albatross, which is our largest uh, flying bird. But also you have little birds that some uh, uh, ornithologists love, like mockingbirds, uh, that each island has one particular species. So, um, so yeah. Okay, so you mentioned the waved albatross. Are there any other uh, maybe super special flora or fauna in this area? Well, uh, that is Española, the yeah. Southeast Island. Uh, that's the special bird in the, uh, special animal in there. And in the other two islands, well, in, I mean, you have flamingo colonies, which are really, really cool. You have massive nesting areas for sea turtles. And uh, in my home island, we probably are the capital of, in the Galapagos, besides being the capital, it's the capital for the sea lion. I actually wanted to do the event uh, down there just to show you the sea lions, but it, the connection is pretty bad and it's also really windy, so you wouldn't hear me. But uh, yes, you have so many sea lions in the Southeast. Yeah. Maybe too much. <laughs> too I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> Well, not if you're living in front of them. <laughs> All right. So what are some fun activities that you can do in these areas? Oh, in the Southeast, I love to do kayaking. That's one of my favorite in that area. Yeah, kayaking, um, because in most of the places where we um, do the visits, uh, they're pretty calm. They're the calmest, actually. And we also have a lot of snorkeling. There's very, very good snorkeling. Uh, there's opportunities to see sharks. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. <laughs> I love sharks. All right, so what are some of your favorite, like personal favorite visiting points in Galapagos? Say again? What are some of your favorite visiting sites in Galapagos? Oh, my goodness. I think <laughs> no, everybody... Yeah, I think everybody, I mean, all um, my colleagues um, agree that there's two that are super special, which are Genovesa, that I mentioned before, which is in the Northeast. You can point it out if you would like. Uh, that is, I mean, it's, it's really special to me because uh, it feels, oh, it feels like we're in, in the Eden. It's so cool. Plus the snorkeling, um, um, it's kind of scary because... Uh, you don't get to see much of the bottom. It's just a wall snorkeling. But you sometimes get my favorite animal, which are hammerheads. So that's my first pick. Did you get to see hammerheads when you were here? No, I haven't seen hammerheads yet. One day. Oh, my. <laughs> How many times have you been here? Three times? I think so. Okay. The fourth has to be on a tour with me. Then I'll show you hammerheads. You bring okay. John too. Deal. So the, I mean, the second pick is uh, Fernandina, uh, which is the West. It is, it is our youngest. It, ha it is so active. So um, we're talking about eruptions happening there every three, five years. That's right. In the last two years, we had three eruptions in that place. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you get to see hundreds and hundreds of uh, plus the western area has so many turtles. There's so much food for 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 those reptiles in there, and just uh, the the landscape. So I would say Fernandina, um, um, and also this time in the year, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, because I was with my with my nephew uh, at the beach earlier to put it a whale at the distance. So this time in the year is fantastic. And I would say my third pick is Kicker Rock for snorkeling. It's, it's San Cristobal Island, and it is it's one of the best places to find sharks. Great. So let's answer some of the questions that you guys had earlier. Um, let's start with, is Ecuador open for travel? I will take this question. Um, so local flights have started uh, operating in Ecuador right now, and we expect that the airports will open up for international travel very soon. So we're hoping with that within the next couple of months 
people can start to return here to travel again. All right, any more questions? I think that's all the questions we have. Um, so I think that pretty much covers the regions of Galapagos. If you have, do you, do you have anything else that you want to add about Galapagos or regions or anything else? Well, I'm, uh, first I'm starting to forget everything already. So uh, it'd be fantastic if people came sooner than, than everybody expects, just so that I can go and have more fun again with my, my buddies, my animals. Um, don't be afraid. Uh, we are probably one of the, uh, um, the provinces in Ecuador with the least number of cases that have, that have shown up. And currently, if I'm not wrong, we don't have any active cases, so that's pretty good. So we have all the safety measures. You have no idea all the, the uh, um, oh, how do you call it? All the protocols that now we yeah. have to follow. So, so I think it's, um, it's, uh, it's, we're definitely doing everything so that it's safe in the moment that the, um, the airports are opening and we are more uh, to have everybody back. Great. You should come too. So I, I will come as soon as I can. <laughs> so I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining us and a big thank you to Enrique for all your help and giving us tons of great information about the different regions in Galapagos. It, as I said before, if you guys missed our last events on the basics of Galapagos, on flora, fauna, and formation, you can find these videos on our IGTV right now, and you can watch them right now if you want, or you can find them on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, or you can send us an email at info at galapagosislands.com, and we will send the video directly to you. And don't forget, last week will be the finale of our four-part series where we will be talking about history, legends, and tales of the islands. If you have any other questions, or you'd like to talk more about something and get more information on other things, you can live chat with us on our website at galapagosislands.com, or you can email us at info at galapagosislands.com, or you can send us a message right here on Instagram or on Facebook. And don't forget, like, follow, and subscribe all of our social media. We post regularly lots of fun content about the Galapagos. Um, and send us to your friends so they can learn more about Galapagos too. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for being here and joining us today, and we hope to see you next week for uh, History, Legends, and Tales of the Islands. Bye! Here he is. <laughs>